Hello and welcome to the cello tutorials. My name is Sophie Kotwauri and I'm a private teacher and a deputy at the Royal College of Music in London. This is your lesson number six for complete beginners. Note on the C string, C major scale, one and two octaves. C major arpeggio, one and two octaves. And a proper workout for your right hand to establish a proper bow hold. Let's start with the note on the C string. As you can see, the C string is the lowest, the thickest, and it's quite far from the A string. You will need to ensure that the left hand is well supported by your elbow. You will need to bring it forward. Before doing anything, place your fingers on the C string. Make sure you can do touch and fall exercise. So you just touch the strings and then you sink into the strings without squeezing. How to check that? Take your thumb off the neck and try it. Touch, fall, touch and fall. Another thing you need to be aware is your wrist. It should remain straight. And now try each finger without using your thumb. But the thumb stays under the second finger. It's just a little bit off the neck. Place the first finger, touch, now fall. Good. Now the same with the second finger. Touch and fall. Same with the third finger, touch and fall. And with the fourth finger, touch and fall. That's it. And your thumb is just under your fingerboard. Now try lifting. Off, 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 off. And when you're lifting, don't go far from the string. Stay above the string. And the last thing is revise note on the G string. Why? Because this note on the C string, they will go parallel. If your B natural on the G string is played with a third finger, then another natural note on the C string will be played with the third finger as well, which is different from the D and A strings, where you play your natural F and C with the second finger. Let's do it quickly. G, A natural one, B natural three, and C natural four. Now let's bring this on the C string and I will help you to get the naturals first. Open C, natural D, natural E, third finger, and F. And now let's check all the notes you cover in the first position. C, tone D, semitone makes E flat, another semitone makes E natural, and another semitone makes F. Do you remember how to check the distances between your fingers? And the good news are, you can check your first finger D with an open string, if it's in tune or out of tune. C, D. Let's check it with an open D. That's in tune. E flat, and I'm checking my distances by helping with the right hand. It should has one finger distance. Good, E natural, semitone. And again, I'm checking my distance with the right hand. And the F, checking the distance. To summarize, you have only one flat we know so far on the C string, which is E flat. And what happens if we bring the hand on the G string playing the same second finger? we're playing B flat, which means E flat and the B flat, they are parallel on the same line. To secure your C string and do better mapping, let's see which note goes parallel. C is parallel to G. D is parallel to A. E flat and the B flat are parallel. K 
can you see I'm placing my fingers flat? This is an exception. When you're playing the two notes, or sometimes when you're playing the chord, some of the fingers, they might go flat. Third finger, E is parallel to B. And the F is parallel to C. Do you remember those exercises which we've done learning D string and A strings? Try them on the C and the G strings as well. And of course, we need to do a tunnel because the C string is quite far away. Therefore, we need to ensure that we have enough space and all the knuckles are curved so we can hear ringing G playing on the C string. Let's try to build a tunnel. I'm going to play all my notes on the C string, but after each of them, I'm going to plug open G. Starting from the C. C, G. D, G. First finger D. Still ringing, which is very good. Second finger E flat, G. Good. Third finger E natural with the G. Still ringing, which is good. Fourth finger F with an open G. Hmm, not so well. It means one of the finger or maybe few of them are touching the open G. And generally you will feel somewhere here how the G vibrates. Therefore, it's quite normal. Try to stand more on the fingertips. Maybe even try to get closer to your nail and let's see how that works. Stand on the fingertips, closer to your nail, curve more. After this, let's try another exercise. How to get the nose parallel. Do you remember? We're gonna start from the C string. Cross. Second finger on the E flat. Draw the straight line to the B flat. Leave the second finger. Cross third finger to the E. Draw the straight line to the B. Leave it there. Bring the elbow forward because the pinky needs more support. It's by itself on the C string. F and cross to the C. Now we're gonna start from the A string. Leave the first finger, cross with the second to the B flat. Draw the straight line to the E flat. Leave it there. Third finger to the B. Draw the straight line. Leave it there. Fourth finger crossing to the C. Draw the straight line to the F. Let's try it without any comment. Starting from the C string. Starting from the G string. Again, this is universal exercise, which will help you to do a good mapping, which means memorizing your fingerboard, knowing which notes are parallel. And also, your intonation will be improved a lot. If you need to check your distances using the right hand, do it. Therefore, you will have more gaps between the notes, but it's absolutely fine. Cross, check. Watch. Check. Watch. And another important thing, when I'm watching my fingerboard, I'm not twisting. This is a really common mistake. It's better to use the mirror rather than twisting. And the last finger, pinky. And draw the parallel line. Another tip which might help you to improve your intonation and to hear the notes more clear, use an open strings to check if you played the right note or not. Using this exercise, you can check the starting note. For example, if you start from the C string, you can check your D. 
or if you're starting from the G string, you can check by plucking open A. Can you see I'm sharper? It will require you to listen carefully. And actually, this is the most challenging part, learning any string instrument. You need to listen. You need to hear what you are playing. And of course, you need to know the note you want to get or the sound you want to get out of your instrument. Therefore, listen very, very carefully what's going on under your fingers, because we always aim for the quality. Time for the C major. First, we're going to see one octave and then we're going to extend to two octaves. Before we do the C major scale, one octave, let's do a mapping. And the C major is the easiest one because it doesn't have any flats or the sharps, which makes all your notes natural. First, think, where are your natural? It's always the question between the second or the third finger. And as we already spoke in the beginning of the lesson, your naturals on the C and G strings are played with the third finger. Therefore, the second finger will go together with the third finger. And what you can do is practice before. Place the first finger and try to aim to land together with the second and the third finger. And of course, you can help with the right hand. If that works perfectly, let's try C major. Another most common mistake is the students, they just memorize the fingering and they're not quite following the notes. And this is the terrible mistake because you're going to suffer a lot when your scales will become more challenging and you will change your positions. Therefore, let's start to learn the scales in the proper way because this will become your habit and you're going to do the same with every single scale you're going to learn, which will allow you to succeed quicker. First, we name or we sing the note. Better if you sing. C. D. Think. Which finger was for D first? Natural E, which makes a tone. F natural, which makes a semitone. We're leaving the fingers on, crossing to the G. First finger makes the straight line, and as soon as you land on the first finger, take the rest off. A, B natural, C natural semitone. So do you remember the structure of the major? Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Let's go back. C, B natural, A, G, F. All the fingers go down at the same time. E natural, D, and C. Did you notice? I name the note in advance before my finger goes to that note. And that's what you should be doing. Please practice it many, 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 many times before you can do it without naming your notes. Now listen very carefully for your intonation. Let's try. Starting from the C. And now you might ask me, what have I done? I was preparing my fingers in advance. So generally I was doing the quavers. To make it more clear, let's see how that works. I'm gonna count in the quavers. In the Kodai system, quavers are T, T. 
I'm gonna do a few notes. T T T T T T T T. You spend one quaver for preparation, another quaver for plucking, which means one quaver for the left hand, one quaver for the right hand. And if you have an open string, you skip that quaver. Let's do it super, super slowly. And to make it maybe easier, I'm going to say which hand is preparing the note. Prepare the left hand above the first position. Ready? It's a right, left. Stay there. Right, left. Stay there. Right, left. When I say stay there, it means the left hand is not moving. It's step by step. One more time. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, skip, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left right, left, right, left, right, left, right. If you will practice your scales this way, you will never have a problem of overlapping your notes when playing fast. Now let's do a second octave of the C major. And before we continue, let's do another mapping. Again, because the C major doesn't have any flat or sharp, let's see where are placed our naturals on the D and A strings. And again, at the beginning of the lesson, we already told it that they are under my second finger, F natural and C natural, which is gonna be your last note. So we're not using third and the fourth finger, for the A string because the C is our tonic. We start with the tonic and we end with the tonic and we go back to the tonic. Another exercise to ensure that we are not using the third finger by its own. Now the third finger will come together with the fourth on the string. So let's try it a few times. If you need the help with your right hand, do it because sometimes the right hand people, they found it's easier to copy because the hands are quite synchronized. When you feel you are ready, let's start. And we're going to start with the C fourth finger on the G string. Please follow me. I'm going to name note in advance. C. Leave the fingers on, cross to the D. First finger is crossing, drawing the straight line, reaching E, and take the rest off, E. F natural, G. Leave the fingers on, cross with the right hand. Now cross with the left hand, drawing the straight line, B, and C, second finger. This is our tonic, so we go back. B, open A, G, place all the fingers at the same time, second finger F, E, D, and tonic C. Practice it many, many, many times. If you need an extra help, print out the fingerboard chart for the cello and place it right in front of you. But still, when you will be checking your fingerboard, the fingerboard chart, please name each note you are playing in advance. Now let's try the second octave of the C major without any comment. C, starting with the fourth finger.
time for the whole scale C major two octaves and again you need to ensure that the left hand has enough support on the C string bring the elbow C D E F G A B C D E F G A B C B A G F E D C B A G F E D C without any comment It's a time for arpeggio. Before we start, we need to understand which note we are looking for. Because if in the scale you are playing notes in order, then in arpeggio we need to skip some notes. Because we are only playing first, third and the fifth notes from the scale. Let's name them. Definitely C is first note. Skipping D. E is the third note skipping F and G is your fifth note C E G and because you already know your fingerboard it will be easier to find them but don't guess name the note prepare it first in your head find it on your fingerboard and then only move your finger to the right place let's see C major arpeggio one octave C, E, G. Keep them in your mind and follow them. C, E, natural, third finger. Leave it. Which note is next? G. Open string, so leave the third finger on the string. And now, which note is the next? One, three, five, and of course, we start and we end up with the tonic. So on the top, you always need to have C, which is our fourth finger. Get it. Go back. G. But my third finger is still waiting. And of course, you need to know it. But this E will be already waiting for you. And C. One more time. C. E, G, C, G, E, and C, without comments. Well done. We're going through the first octave. What about the second? The note will be the same. C, E, G. Let's start from the fourth finger on the G string, C. And you can check if your C is in tune or out of tune by plucking open C. That's it. C, E, G. Keep them in your mind. C. Where is E? First finger, E. Next note is G. 
and you can check this note by plucking an open G. That's it. And the next note is tonic because we always end with the tonic. Next note is C. Find it, get there, and you can check that note if it's in tune or out of tune by plucking an open C. So first let's check, good, and then we are there. Let's go back, C, G, E, G, E, C. One more time, a bit quicker. C, E, G, C, G, E, C. At the very end, you can leave your fingers like I've, I've done now, but you can take the fourth finger if you need, but don't take all of them, leaving just the second finger and then bringing them back. No, one of the fingers should stay and better if the first finger stays. But again, if you can keep them all, do it. If you need a little break, take a little break because we're gonna do two octave arpeggio. Name the notes, please, in advance. C, E, G, C. E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, E, C, G, E, and C. After you've done it from 20 to 80 times, try without naming the notes. Now we're coming to a big topic, which is how to establish your proper bow hold. And it's really important because 80% or even more of your sound is in your right hand. The way how you're getting the sound out will show how well you control your bow. And there is so many colors you can get with your right hand, helping you to express your feelings. Therefore, your right hand should be established and the bow should become a continuation of your hand. We're going to develop the flexibility of the arm, the flexibility of your wrist, flexibility of your fingers and your knuckles. But of course, before we start, we need to revise bow hold. If you remember, I showed you already three different ways how to get your bow grip. And the first is um, the easiest. If you shake your hand, you find the silver part right here and you help with your left hand to bring that silver part right under your middle finger. And as you can see, it sits deep. So it's not finishing here. You need to get deeper, which means lower. And that level is approximately the middle of your nail. So shake, bring it under your second finger which is the middle finger, and that's it. This is how the fingers will be placed on the bow. The only question is where the thumb goes. And the thumb goes right here. If you can see the leather part and the beginning of your frog or heel. The French, they call it froche. The English, they call it frog or heel. But the trick with the thumb is it should be curved. So it should be kind of pointing that beginning without going through. So never go through. Try to touch that part with the corner of your thumb. Bring the bow like this and move your thumb side to side. Okay, now stop and try from that leather part and go, go, go until you poke this beginning of the frock. And one more time. Curve and go, go, go until you poke. And get it to the right position. 
you definitely need to hold it with your left hand because the bow is very heavy and unbalanced and if you will take it off that will happen so one more time shake silver part bring it and start sliding do you remember from where curve your thumb but place it on the leather part and start sliding until you get there and bring it right in front of you now the trick here is you shouldn't squeeze you shouldn't cramp the left hand is holding the bow for you what you do is you're lightly touching your bow with the right hand the biggest pain in the right hand is the thumb if you will squeeze if you will try to crump it you will start feeling a pain and the pain which comes from the thumb is on the it's right here is really dangerous be really careful staying absolutely free here but we're gonna talk about those tricks later the second way how to get the bow grip was flip over your palm and the bow right what we are aiming here is again this silver part definitely and the knuckles the middle part of your first and the second knuckle which is right here flip it over relax silver part and the middle knuckles why we need to relax the hand because if you're gonna squeeze you will have no distance between the fingers so this is natural distance between the fingers so silver part in between of the first and the second knuckle and the question is where the thumb goes and the same way curve it start from the leather part until you poke it don't turn too much this is really really natural you don't need to curve in right and flip it over that's it but be careful here because if you're flipping over and not helping with the left hand that might happen again and it will happen because we are not paying attention to the pinky now and the pinky needs to be quite strong to keep this space right here and not to lie down which generally will make your weakest finger the strongest and the third way is go by order starting with the middle finger silver part right here right just drop the third finger right here good index finger aim for the space in between of the first and the second knuckle and I rotate a little bit so it lies down a tiny bit and the pinky it should be on the board curved not standing on the top and the thumb same thing curve it start from the leather part and bring it up to the beginning of the frog that's it you have three different ways how to get your bow grip choose the one which works best for you workout what you can do is you can use your original bow or the pencil or the piccolo bow especially if you have a smaller students or smaller kids it's better to start with a piccolo bow because it is balanced so only thing they will need to think about is bow hold when you're using the original bow you need to think about the balance but i will show you how to skip that part for now i will show you where is your balance point now find the middle and it's few centimeters away from this middle part and try to place it on your index finger so it works like a scale when it's perfectly straight and it's not falling to the left side or to the right side this is your balance point and you will need it for the rest of your life for the beginning you might place a sticker there if you want or just memorize and imagine this is your silver part now so you are building up the grip the same way you would build up your grip right here or if it's easier and you have a sticker start here and bring the whole thing right to your balance point 
Can you see what my fingers does? Yes, they are touching the hairs, which is not good, but trust me, it's better to change the cheap bow rather than to spend the years of correcting your right hand. And always keep an eye to your thumb. Again, have the feeling that you are lifting the bow, not squeezing. The task is not to hold it, but to lift it. And now we're starting from your wrist. You can grab your arm just before your wrist so you can see if it really moves or not. And start doing some few exercises like up, down, saying yes. Then saying no. Then try to do some circles. Check the thumb, check the other fingers, Just make sure you are not squeezing. The thumb is still under the second finger. They always go together, the same as you do in the left hand. And that's it for the wrist for now. Now let's try to do a flexible fingers. Let's work them out. What I will ask you to do is push the pinky inside and grab the wrist now. So make sure the wrist is not helping now. Push the pinky in and the rest of the fingers, they will adjust to that motion. And with the index finger, make it straight again. So it should be horizontal, parallel with the floor. And one more time, pinky in, index finger, pinky, index finger. The second and the third fingers, they are touching the stick because sometimes students, they go off. We do that exercise, this is another exercise, but it comes later. Now let's try to push the pinky down and again, lose those fingers, relax them to make sure they do adjust that motion now. And with the index finger, bring it back, pinky. And the trick here is that the thumb will become straight. Return, thumb becomes curved, pinky. Thumb is straight, index finger, thumb is curved. Try to keep the bow parallel to the floor. So if you're doing something like this, that's the not right thing. Inside, thumb is straight, thumb is curved. Thumb is straight, thumb is curved. Down and up, thumb is straight, thumb is curved. Straight, curved. This is more complicated now because what I will ask you to do, imagine you're still holding your wrist. Imagine you need to send your bow to your right side and it will look like this. So the index finger is staying curved always, but the other fingers, they're kind of pushing the bow away. They're kind of trying to, to go, say like, go away. But again, don't go inside or out you will be aiming to draw the straight line, like if you're going like a train on the railway. And again, the thumb will become straight, curved, straight, curved, straight, curved, straight. If you can't get this exercise right now, give it a time. And we return to this exercise in a few days and try it again. And if it's not there, relax, calm down, do something else and keep returning. And the knuckles, same thing. If you can't get it right now, give it a time. Idea of this exercise actually is if you lose your hand and maybe even hang on your index finger like this, and then you're trying to pick it up, making a straight line here with your knuckle. And again, you drop it and straight line. Drop, straight line, drop, straight line, drop, straight line. And again, the thumb here is straight. And when you're picking up, the thumb becomes curved. The most common mistake is when the students are trying to do something like this and they do curve it inside. But you need to aim your fingers to always point down, not inside, but down to the floor. Good idea would be if you try without the bow, relax, pick it up, relax, pick it up, relax. When you relax, your thumb is just hanging. 
and when you're picking up it goes under the middle finger curved relax pick it up relax pick it up but don't curve them inside they always should point down the fingers are different length isn't it when you pick it up they are becoming at the same line so they're all touching the finger for now and I'm going to repeat it again once again if you are not feeling confident with your ball start doing all those exercises using the pencil after you've done this stage you can move on to the next the first exercise is the painting and I will ask you to grab your bow right here at the tip with your left hand bring it right in front of you and the right hand will go over but watch what I'm doing my palm is completely open I'm completely sinking in my index finger so put the stick on this knuckle on the second knuckle we need it quite deep or below doesn't matter right the other fingers they are lying down on the first finger what I want to do is paint it will look like a fish tail the main task here is to not go this way so don't roll over you always lean on the index finger and the index finger is not changing it always should look to your left side so avoid doing something like this straight and don't straight no after that's done and you've got this movement watch your elbow as well how the elbow joint is opening opening closing elbow joint is this part which connects your upper and the lower arm after you notice that the index finger stays good the wrist the elbow joint are working well now bring the second finger on your stick and do exactly the same and add another finger index finger is still on its place and can you see my knuckles so I'm not pointing this way my knuckles are quite deep and the uh, pinky the next exercise for your bow is lifting so what I want you to do is hold your bow with your left hand and the right hand should be completely relaxed have the nice bow grip and try to lift it and lift it that will help you to release unnecessary tension in your hand and especially in your thumb can you see how the hand moves and lift it so it's completely flexible lift it can you see each time I'm trying to pull my bow with me exercise number three is stretching for that exercise your right hand must be at the balance point and the left hand nearby watch what we're gonna do drop your shoulders make sure you're completely relaxed now rise your elbows tiny bit can you see the bow hold the fingers are pointing down and the left hand does copy now try to stretch the bow what we need is to see that finger motion and watch the wrist as well it's a bit curved and while stretching it sits down so it becomes straight and the fingers can you see what the finger does and return one more time stretch release stretch release for this exercise try to keep the thumb curved so when you're stretching you're imagine someone is pulling you grabbing your elbow and pulls you on the side and the same happens in the left hand and stretch stretch so standing fingers 
and lie down. Standing and lie down. For this exercise, all of your fingers should feel a stick. The next exercise is the waves. If it helps, you can still hold your bow at the balance point, but if you feel confident, you can go to the frog. But we will need the support of the left hand. What we will try to do is a wave. Or if it will be easier, then think that with this little tail, you're trying to draw a circles. And let's try. So the arm moves, the wrist. If you ever done the rowing, it's really similar to that motion as well. With the left hand, don't hold with all of your fingers because that might reduce the mobility of your bow. So just holding with two of your fingers will be enough. Let the bow move. And the last exercise for today is shaking. Try to shake your bow if you're trying to get rid of something. It's really similar to this yes motion when we were just using the wrist, but when you're shaking, we're a little bit involving the lower arm as well. Check if your fingers are loose and flexible and you're not squeezing with your thumb. So the fingers are relaxed, but they are catchy. For this exercise, you will need a cello. Do you remember this painting movement? We will try to do it on your cello. Same thing, grab your bow with the left hand and put it parallel to the bridge in between of the fingerboard and the bridge. Good. This time my hand is resting on the cello. And we're going to do the same thing. Turn your palm and start painting. If you need to do it slower, do it slower. If you need to control more the direction of the index finger and flexibility of the wrist, Move your wrist and watch an elbow joint as well. Because if you won't open the elbow joint, then playing, your bow will go back. And you will definitely catch the other strings as well. Therefore, we open, open, open. Once again, my stick is lying down right here. I prefer to keep it below the second knuckle because when you will add the other fingers that will give you more room. I'm adding second finger, the thumb is still here, we're not doing anything with the thumb. Thumb is relaxed. And adding the third finger, still can you see the direction of the index finger? It always, always looks to your left side. And the pinky goes on the board as well. Try it on the different strings because your angle will be changed and you will notice that, okay, on my A string, I need to open more. And if something like this happens that you can't reach your frog, that's why we are turning the cello slightly on your right side and therefore your knee is under your cello. That will help you to get the control of the A string even when you're opening it. Another important thing is if you open your elbow joint until the end, that will reduce your control at the tip. Therefore, you should always keep a little angle right here. Don't open fully, keep a little angle. And there is another trick if you have short hands. While playing an A string, you open, but from that point, you do curve your bow. So you bend 
your bow to your right. You don't open it completely, making the straight line, but you bend a little bit to your right, kind of going inside. And see what happens. The sound is not changing, but I still have this little angle at my elbow joint, which gets me a total control of my bow, even at the tip. But for the painting exercise, stop at the point you feel, okay, that's the end. I can't stretch more. And start with the index finger. Second, third, and the fourth. Do the same with the G and C string, using this banana shape to get the right angle. Also, just to remind you how you can find the right angle without using the banana shape if you don't want to, is put your bow straight on the bridge. Okay, this is straight, and then bring it to your contact point. G string, D string, and A string. So at this stage, we are not playing yet with the bow. We're preparing our right hand for the good bow hold for the flexible fingers, wrist, and the arm. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please put the thumb up and subscribe to not to miss the next videos. If you have any questions, please comment them below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Take care and we'll see you next time.